Greetings, internets. Welcome again to Deploy Friday, the Platform SH show, where we talk with interesting people about cool topics, or sometimes cool top cool people about interesting topics. Which one today will be? I don't know. Let's find out. Today we continue our uh, the language spotlight series, and uh, this week we're talking about PHP. If you have used PHP in the past, you may not recognize PHP today. It's actually quite different in all the good ways. Joining us today are the PHP 8.0 release managers. We have Sarah Goldman. Say hello. That's, that's her. And, Hi, everybody. Uh, Gabriel, and Gabriel Caruso. Did I say the name right? Yeah, you said. Hello, everyone. And from the platform side, I'm joined by Patrick Dawkins, who you may know as the primary person responsible for the platform CLI. So you have, you have him to thank for that. And I mean that in a good way, Patrick. I Seriously. <laughs> Thank you. And hello. So before we get in into PHP itself, Sarah, tell us a bit about you, what you're doing, why you're here. Uh, well, you asked me here because I'm the PHP, well, one of the PHP based managers, I'll do respect to uh, Gabriel over there. Um, we uh, are the ones responsible for making sure it gets packaged up and uh, chip out to users both to get tested before final release and to shepherd it through the next three years uh, because we cover three years of release uh, support for every version. I was technically still am release manager for 7.2. We are going completely EOL in about a month. So that's gonna free me up to focus on 8.0 entirely. And uh, I've just been working on PHP for almost 20 years and I love it too much to, to turn away. I love it, love. I remember I went to my first PHP conference in 2007 and you were already one of the big names that, you know, oh my God, Sarah's here. So yeah, so you've been around a long time and in a good way. 2007 sounds so early. I remember going to a conference in 2003 and somebody came up to Wes Furlong and they're having a conversation and the guy, he, they finally get around to introductions and he goes, oh my God, you're the Wes. <laughs> I always love to, to tease him about because it's such a little groupy moment, but uh, yeah. Gabriel, how about you? So about me, I feel I feel like a baby because I had my first conference was in 2017, so <laughs> that was at least ten years. Uh, so yeah, my name is Gabriel. Uh, I'm the other release manager of PHP 8.0. That's very important because people think we're gonna take care of all the PHP 8 release. No, it's just the 8.0, and it's gonna be long three years. Um, and yeah, together with Sarah, we are making sure that we have a stable. PHP 8.0.0 release so far, so good. Let's do it. I'm look, very much looking forward to that. So let's start off. PHP is, as far as web languages go, one of the older ones. It's 25, 26 years old now, uh, something in that neighborhood. 25, yeah. We were supposed to have years. a big 25 year meetup this year, but you know, plague. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's changed a lot in that time. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that people still have about PHP that might have been true, but aren't anymore or never were true? What, what's, people, what do people a not lot of, know about PHP? The PHP is evolving. I think uh, uh, that's something that I have noticed, uh, uh, especially once I become a release manager, a lot of people from other communities like, oh, I heard that you're a release manager. So what are the new features of PHP? I was like, when did stop working with PHP. They're like PHP 5, 6. I was like, there's a lot of stuff. Like the PHP 7 series, we had a lot of additions. Uh, the PHP 8 itself has a bunch of stuff. Uh, so I think that's that's the biggest misconception. People forgot that a language can evolve. So they mm -hmm. think it's, it's stuck on time. But no, PHP has evolved since, I don't know, five years since we started big changes or even later uh, before than that. But yeah, I think that's that's my, my take. It is, is evolving and people forgot about it. Yeah, I, I'd add to that. I, I would actually say we really picked up speed with 5.3, uh, which is kind of an ironic thing because that was right about the time we introduced the RFC process. Prior to that point, anyone working on PHP would just be like, oh, I think it should have a kitchen sink that uh, can also play the banjo. So I'm just going to throw that in. And when we introduced RFCs, everyone was thinking like, oh my gosh, that's going to slow us down. That's going to make it harder to get stuff in. But the stats don't lie. If you look at every version released since that period, 
we've just been adding more and more features in and they've been well thought through features, features that people broadly can agree on and uh, do things that people using PHP actually care about, things like names, spaces, typed ram, typed uh, scalar types, strict types, there's the word, mm -hmm. um, and all the variations that have come out from there um, and a bunch of other things that people actually really, really love and use as opposed to, oh, you know what? I think I want to wrap the SNMP library because so many people are going to use that. So I'm going to throw that into core. Do we still have an SNMP library in there? We do. It's still there. It, I, well, it might be in Siberia. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, in joke, Siberia is is what is uh, Peckle, the PHP extension code library, uh, is derisively known as. Uh, but I think it's still in core. Yeah, I feel like it's very public these days. Uh, it's and it like it's very easy to follow along with PHP core development, and you can see the RSCs that they come up, and then get really excited about them, and then you just have to wait <laughs> a couple of years or so until you can actually start using that code. Yeah, well, I mean, the social nature of the internet has really helped with that. You know, we have things like you know uh, Reddit or uh, other you know internet forums that sort of help add to the discussion on the outside. But I also just want to call out externals.io. Uh, I forget who made that site, but like the the PHP internals discussions happens on a good old fashioned mailing list, you know, 30 year old, 40 year old technology. Um, we have a view into that mailing list called news.php.net, which looks like it was written in the nineties because it was. And externals.io is a much more modern sort of view into that. It's nice and threaded. It's much easier to follow along with. It can keep track of where you personally have left off. So I think all of these things have just made it easier for people to at least watch what's going on, uh, whether or not they choose to participate in what's going on. Mattia Napoli is the name of the guy behind externals. Yeah, I sponsor you. I sponsor him on, on GitHub sponsors just because of that because it's an amazing addition uh, to follow the threads to if you if you like an RFC you can up and down vote uh, so it's a it's a very nice way for the community to, to interact with internals if they don't want to subscribe for the for the mailing list itself. And we'll put a link to the uh, show notes. Yep. So <clears throat> for people who used PHP back in the day and haven't touched it since or have just heard that Smack talk about it years ago and haven't kept up. What are some of the more exciting newer features that people may not realize PHP has? I know we've gone, you know, we've, you've done episodes uh, of other podcasts talking about just the full feature list of PHP 8. We're working on a blog series on mm -hmm. PHP 8 that covers all the major features. So we don't need a full tour. Just what's the most exciting new thing in recent PHP that like, oh, PHP can do that? Cool. Mm. My take for people that have, yeah, um, uh, but I think the type system. Uh, the other day, uh, I think two, three days ago, I saw a tweet, a, a tweet from uh, Gary, uh, which is a member of the community, saying, remember PHP without types? And I was like, yeah, that was a long time ago. Because now a lot of the code base that I'm working with PHP is, extremely, is strictly type. Like everything is typed, return parameters, properties now on PHP 7.4, uh, union types on PHP 8. So the type system of PHP that got introduced on PHP 7, like has uh, has increased, like has improved a lot. So uh, I think the type system for me is is the biggest uh, change uh, uh, in the in the modern versions of PHP. I, I definitely agree. Type system is like we have exploded since 7.0 when strict types were introduced. I think that really brought uh, the type system to the forefront of people's minds because they can actually use types that they actually pass around on a daily basis much better than they could before. Before you could only really do classes and arrays, which mm -hmm. is a lot, but it's not enough. Um, but I think type system is, because of that, something that is already on the forefront of people's minds. Um, and your question, Larry, had to do with what are things that people sort of aren't noticing and aren't thinking about? Um, I think from my perspective, FFI is pretty cool. Um, foreign function include or foreign interface. function interface. Thank you. Uh, I always forget the I means. Um, <laughs> is a very cool thing uh, from a extension writing and, and, and prototyping thing. Most people are not going to care about that. So it's cool to me. Um, I think things that people are going to care about that maybe they haven't 100% wrapped their minds around yet are attributes. 
Um, we have annotations right now in doc blocks. It's basically something that's being done outside of the language and libraries are making use of these things by parsing the doc blocks sort of at runtime, maybe caching them things in APCU or something, but um, attributes are going to bring that up to the next level and allow us to do much more interesting things in the future with user space classes and code and even internal code that we can't even guess what it's going to be yet. And I think that's why people are, are not 100% really sure what's gonna happen with that yet and maybe don't even fully understand it. So I think we need to see post-release of 800 what are people going to start doing with it? Are we going to see like those those writing attributes? Are we going to see ORM attributes? You know, what are we going to see, and and how are people really going to use them? Yeah, I, I've been playing with those recently uh, for one of my libraries for the blog series, and it's a little tr tricky to get used to if you're not used to it. But the the functionality it offers, yeah, I it's like I don't even know what all I can do with this yet, and it's going to be a long list. Yeah. I remember when I first encountered them in Java years and years ago, I was like, why doesn't every language have this? <laughs> well, one of the things that uh, I recall is there was a push to add attributes to the language back in 2016. And the response then was, who needs this? Who, why is, does anyone care? And now it came back this year and it passed with only one dissenting vote. So it's in some ways just the language and the community needed to mature to the point that they understood what they would do with it. And yeah. now we don't know what we can do with it because the list is so long. Well, yeah, I not, think one not, of the less, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, just one, uh, one thing. It's not just the attributes, uh, which is the second version of the RFC that is being voted for PHP 8. For example, unit types. That thing was proposed a couple of years ago that got declined. And now we have the version two. So if you take a look at the RFCs on PHP 8, we got, I think, three or four RFC, which, which are the version two. Uh, so that show how the community is evolving uh, and become more mature. Uh, and also the RFCs are becoming more mature. So we can uh, just look at the RFC, vote it, understand it. And there's not much going on uh, around it. So yeah, that's something that also changed. I just wanted to add that I think the lesson to learn here is that, um, I don't want to say pressure, but just making your voice heard. You know, um, the, the PHP community is literally every one of us. It's not just internals, it's not just framework authors. It is literally every single one of us. And part of the reason these things pass later on is because, okay, internals has made its up mind up that this is not something that the community needs. But then the community says, no, actually that would be quite nice, please. Thank you, mm -hmm. if we could do that. Um, main parameters jumps out at me as an example of that, of something that internally we always just, we always just said, this isn't a great idea. Like, you know, these APIs can just make your APIs fixed so that you can always pass the right thing in in the right order, because this is gonna slow it down because PHP is at its core an interpreted language. We can't be like saying, oh, okay, instead of slotting up our parameters one, two, three, four, five, let's just put that one there, 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 and pass it off. It's definitely gonna slow things down. Well. Turns out there was there was call for it and enough call for it that somebody actually worked on an implementation that actually isn't too um, uh, painful in the performance department. So uh, sometimes it's just being a, enough squeaky wheels and just you know respectfully saying, "Hey, we'd kind of like this." Um, I, I I still think um, generics have a chance of finding their way into the language at some point in the future. Don't know when, but. Uh, definitely people keep asking for it. I often joke my primary contribution to PHP internals is inspiring Nikita to go write patches. Man's a machine. No yeah. doubt about that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that uh, names parameters is um, it, it's something that really changes how you end up writing in the in the language because there are there are so many um, kind of standards that we've got embedded um, in our heads now that like only have mm -hmm only have one argument for your function, it, it'll be the, the clearest way. Um, but that, that doesn't always work with, especially um, the idea of, of having functional programming and making sure that all your inputs are in the right place. Um, and yeah, with, with things like the named, named parameters, we can, uh, we can forget about some of those rules. Yeah, yeah have a also, confusing order of arguments, that kind of thing. Yeah, and also naming parameters in specific is a, is a way to document your code. Uh, so not just internally, but a lot of people externally are changing their 
um, uh, parameter names because previously it was a bad one. Uh, but now that that thing on page is going to be part of your API, they are improving it. So yeah, it also works in, in way of documenting your code. Yeah. So for people coming to PHP from other languages, what tends to trip them up? What's the most surprising part of PHP for someone who's used to Python, Ruby, Go, JavaScript? Well, JavaScript, I'm assuming it's the fact that things are synchronous, but that's a JavaScript thing, not a PHP thing. Sarah, do you wanna? I mean, in, I, I think, I'm, I'm gonna give sort of the stock answer, the answer that we've all heard a few times before, which is that uh, PHP allows you to shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, PHP is not built on guide rails. It is rails, not Ruby, no. Um, PHP is designed to say, here are a bunch of tools. Do something with those tools and build something with these tools. And occasionally, yeah, you're gonna wind up uh, writing code or even copying some code from stackoverflow.com or something that turns out uh, gives you a, um, oh my God, I've lost all my words. The cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. I can't XSRF. remember. XSRF. XSRF, thank you. Oh my God, I could not remember that. <laughs> um, yeah, vulnerabilities like that or or even will, we'll, I don't know, cause, cause unexpected behavior, uh, particularly given that PHP, uh, especially the oldest bits of PHP, like type juggling, have some really weird rules around them in terms of what they will allow to happen. Now we've actually fixed a bunch of those rules in 8.0, so we give things that people don't notice. Um, we deprecated a lot of the, what I'm, what I'm gonna call questionable behaviors of dealing with uh, false It abilities. seemed like a good idea at the time, behavior. It seemed like a good idea at the time. And I would actually even argue it was a good idea at the time, but we've evolved, as you said. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, PHP will let you do things other programming languages would stop you and say, um, I'm going to make it hard for you to actually do what you're trying to do here because I don't trust you to do it right. Uh, Whereas PHP is, is just like, yeah, you dog, do what you want to do. So it's, that's surprising, I think, to new people coming in. Hmm. Was everyone yeah, interesting because everyone got quiet? It's interesting you say that since usually PHP, you know, the, the selling point people talk about is how easy it is to get started. Mm -hmm. And you're saying you know, it, that comes at a cost of, you know, it, it's also then easy to go go uh, in wrong directions. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's easy to go in wrong directions. I would say that PHP doesn't make it hard to go in wrong directions. And it's a subtle difference in, in semantics there, but it's not as though, unless you're being very careful, you're gonna fall off the edge of some cliff and shoot yourself in the foot. It's, it's no, like there will be signposts that say, hey, you know what? This is an active shooting range. Don't come this way. But if you walk through, there's no gate stopping you. You can, you can walk through that way if you choose to. Uh, but if you have even a, a basic set of, of understanding both of the environments you're in, which is the web usually, and of programming principles in general, you're going to understand how to read those signs and, and not go that way. But yes, uh, obviously PHP is biggest advantage is this ease of use and, and ease of, of getting into. Mm -hmm. That's that's what brought me in. <laughs> so if I'm trying to get started in PHP today, what's the best way to do that? It's very different today than it was when I started in 1999. I'm dating myself here. And one of the challenges that we talk about a lot in the PHP community is there are still tutorials up from 1999. Please, please, please don't read those. So if someone's getting started in PHP today in 2020, what's a, a good way for them to do so? I will challenge that slightly and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, don't not read those. Go ahead and read those, but bear in mind that they don't represent the most modern best practices. Obviously look for the newest stuff first, which Google should hopefully be giving you. <laughs> yeah, so um, um, not just PHP, but a lot of the other languages, we have a bunch of stuff today in the internet. So uh, tutorials, um, uh, playlists on YouTube, uh, the language themselves are become better and better in terms of documentation. Like if you, if you take PHP, for example, in the past, it had no documentation. Now we have a whole website for it. Um, um, 
so I don't know, probably should PHP on Google and see what returns. Uh, but don't shoot like, should I code PHP on 2020? Because that gets weird results. Like some random videos on YouTube of people trying to click by you. Uh, but just type PHP uh, and see uh, what, what you're going to found it. Um, is PHP the right way still considered a good resource? I have not kept up very well, but I know that was going That's around a lot. That's a very good question. Yeah. PHP the right way. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's a resource for you right there. I'm also watching the chat. So people are asking if there's good resources out there. Um, I do consider the PHP manual to be a very good resource uh, in general. The PHP manual, uh, you know, I joked about the ease of PHP, but the ease of PHP in part comes from the quality of that online documentation, which has since the 90s been just spectacular compared to most other languages. And I would say still is. Yeah. yeah. They're not many languages have that solid a central reference. I think the only one that uh, surpasses it is Rust, which also has fantastic documentation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the PHP docs are, are overall pretty good. I guess one of the confusing things when coming to PHP would be uh, the number of, maybe, um, the size of the community and the number of um, smaller cells of that community um the branches which, yeah. yeah um and uh i guess what with whatever your needs are you're going to probably be drawn to one or the other um and you know there are frameworks and there are uh even whole paradigms there's asynchronous php libraries um that haven't just popped up they're quite mature they've been running for a while um and uh you might pick a different framework depending on your needs or maybe even your, uh, yeah, just what community you're, you're drawn to there. Um, but they do, you know, I would want to say to someone who started using PHP, especially for work, that that there are, there are some centralized standards um, and that if you can start off uh, staying in them and then you don't, don't really need to make uh, so many decisions. So there's, um, there are the PHP fig standards, the PSRs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, there are some tools that help you with that. So there's, um, there are PHP code sniffer. Um, no stack analyzers, a bunch that. of other stuff. Yeah, uh, one the tooling one around thing, PHP uh, yeah, is amazing. Uh, one, one, one thing that, Which uh, actually that ties it, into, sorry? Go ahead. Which ties into a question uh, from the audience from someone named Derek Rethens. You might oh, have heard of him, who asks, besides that, the language, it. what else has improved the ecosystem dramatically in the past decade? Composer, namespaces. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, weird. Took it right out of my mouth. Composer, man. Yeah. That was a game changer. Yeah, we were, we were who don't already know Composer. What is that? Sarah, what is Composer? <laughs> I know oh, that you're going to lob that back to me because <laughs> I turned on my mic. Okay, what that's fine. Composer? That's fine. Uh, Composer is I'm trying to decide how PG to answer this because I'm about to say something uh, profane in a good way. But uh, no, Composer is a, uh, a dependency management system at its core. Uh, it allows you to pull in packages from other places. It uh, generally talks to a central package repository called Packages, though it doesn't have to. And it allows for code sharing and reuse across the PHP ecosystem very solidly. It follows um, multiple standards for how classes get loaded in and, and uh, brought into your system. But it does it in a very consistent way that can be reused over and over and over and over again. Um, if, you know, 15 years ago, if I wanted to pull in somebody else's code, I had two choices. One, I'd you know, find their website, download their tarball, extract it, and that would just be what's in my tree until the next time I thought to update it. Um, with Composer, well, okay, my second choice was use Pear, but uh, the PHP, uh, what does P Pear stand for? PHP. Extensible uh, Application Repository, I believe. Extensible Application Repository, thank you. Um, this is the user code side of it, the PHP code side of, of Pickle, which is the C code side of it. Um, nobody really ever adopted Pair properly. I mean, there were packages in there, but they didn't see really widespread use. Um, Composer has a massive user base now and a massive collection of packages. Anything you can think of to want to include into your project, it's probably in Composer somewhere. There's even a, 
a package in there that does nothing more than provide exceptions for table flips. Who wrote that? I don't know, some chucklehead. Uh, but my point is, um, uh, it, it, it just, it makes code reuse so much more solid and so much better. And every time somebody says, hey, I want to add this new function to the runtime, I'm going to use some examples that are coming into 800. Stir starts with, stir ends with, and stir contains. These are functions that could be easily expressed entirely in PHP. I think Composer does such a gosh darn good job that I think people should be putting these things into Composer so that they're available in all versions of PHP immediately, not into the language itself. I don't always get my wish on that one. Those ones wound up in the core, but you know, hey, uh, Composer is awesome. Let me just say that again. Anything besides Composer that has really helped the ecosystem overall? Frameworks. Um, I think frameworks in general for PHP. Uh, so one thing that I would complement uh, what Patrick said in, uh, in the past was there are two entry points of PHP. People that go for the PHP itself, but people that wants to, I don't know, uh, spin up a website to sell stuff in quarantine. So either they go via WordPress, Shopify, uh, and other stuff, and those stuff are built on top of PHP. But they are frameworks developers, not PHP developers. Uh, so I think frameworks uh, in general are something that has uh, pushed PHP. A lot of a lot of the stuff that we saw on, on PHP 8 uh, was asked by uh, members of the, the, the frameworks, uh, uh, also RRMs and, and other stuff. So I think that the frameworks are another example of something that has evolved in the past uh, with PHP. Yeah, and that actually leads to another uh, good question that you wanted to ask. In years past, uh, in the 90s and 2000s, PHP was infamous for having a whole bunch of different frameworks and applications and tools, none of which talked to each other, all of which were completely independent, did things in their own way in every way possible. And so your knowledge in one was basically not transferable at all to anything else. There was no PHP community. There was a bunch of little communities. To what extent well, is that still true? Or is that I mean, completely? I'm going to answer two parts of that. The first one is that um, there are still definitely sub-communities within PHP. There is the whole umbrella PHP community. But we do have this odd thing that you don't see in a lot of languages where we have these little sub-communities. There are WordPress developers who would not consider themselves PHP developers or, or Drupal or, or any of these other frameworks. They, they are developers in these frameworks and they don't really think about the language uh, per se. Um, people who are developing with these frameworks, I should say, not of the frameworks. Um, but because the other half of that is the people who are developing for these frameworks saw this same problem. And they got together many years ago and they created what is called the Framework Interoperability Group. And so they said, look, people, you know, we shouldn't be trying to just lock people into our framework. That's called vendor lock. And it's a thing that companies do and it's bad. So let's try and do this the better way. Let's try and do this the more open source way because PHP is a, a very pure open source project. And so they created this group to define some standards so they could use a common language to do the same things and maybe leverage things like Composer to share packages between each other and actually uh, uh, integrate properly. And Composer and, and, and Fig and these frameworks, they all kind of came up at the same time in this perfect synchronization. So what they've done is they've created things that say like, okay, I've got a, uh, an HTTP request router, for example. I, here's, I'm going to define a specific set of, of methods with specific signatures that implement a common interface and we're all going to share that same interface between the, the, the lot of us. And it's going to allow us to plug one person's router into another person's ORM, into another person's caching layer. And the end user of all of these frameworks and libraries can just pick best of breed on all of those, or rather best of what fits their purpose, because everybody's purpose is going to be a little bit different. Although ironically, a router is not one of the things that uh, Fig has a standard spec for. I know. I saw. I saw the look on your face when I said that, and I'm like, "Gosh darn it!" I was, <laughs> I was trying to think of PSR seven and fifteen. What seven is just the HTTP message itself. The messaging interface, yes, not the routing yeah. interface. Thank you. I, it was in Which my is head. Used by a number of different frameworks. Yeah. You would think that having served on the PSR, uh, the the Fig um, core committee, I might actually remember some of these things, but. 
it's before noon in our time zone, so I'm not going <laughs> to. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Accommodating okay. these Europeans. <laughs> so this all sounds great, but let's be honest: PHP is old. PHP isn't hip. PHP isn't fun. The when people rattle off a list of languages, they never list PHP, even though it's still very widely used and popular. PHP on a resume isn't as cool looking as long list of others. Why should someone who's just coming out of school today or someone looking for to get into tech or learning to uh, learning a new language, why should they be looking at PHP? Because it's easy. And we, we said that uh, I think how is PHP is to start uh, working with. I think that's the, the biggest selling point. Every, every, you can run PHP everywhere. Like you have PHP available in a lot of operation system. Uh, you don't need a lot of boilerplate. You don't need a lot of uh, tooling. Uh, so let's say you don't need to compile. You just write a PHP file uh, and then you call PHP in the name of the file. And then, there you go. You have a CLI or you have a server. We have a built-in server uh, in the language. A lot of people don't know that. Um, so I think that's used for development point, only, not production. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then we have that. You know, we always say that, but I always see people using it for production. So. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Sorry, sorry. I thought you were done, Gabriel. No, no, no. Yeah, I just said those are my thoughts on on how people decided to use PHP. All right, then then I'm going to be a bit, um, you know, uh, PHP fangirl here and say you should learn PHP if you're going to work on the web. Period. Um, PHP was born in the web. It was built for the web. It literally grew up with the web. The entire CGI interface was only about two years old when Rasmus first put out his first version of PHP. It is part of the web's DNA and it does the web really, 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 really well. Other languages all focus on being general purpose languages because you, know, you generally want your language to be able to do a lot of different things. And they say, okay, and we're also going to do the web. And the result is something that usually works just fine. You know, I have seen um, websites written in many, many languages. Uh, God knows Node.js is actually a really good platform, but PHP is the only one of those major languages that was built for the web and has all the tooling in the box for the web as its main purpose. People make fun of the double claw hammer um, from that famous blog post about PHP. But you know what? It turns out that's how you build websites. You build websites with double claw hammers. And that's why there are so many really good, really high scale, high quality websites out there using PHP. So if you're going to be building for the web, yeah, you should learn PHP, if at least to understand what is possible. Doesn't mean you have to actually use it. You should always use the right tool for the right job and the right set of circumstances. Sometimes if you're just on a team with a bunch of people who think PHP is smelly, then you're not going to build your next tool in PHP because fighting them is harder than fighting in other languages. Um, inability to, to hit the web quite so perfectly as PHP. So PHP what exactly minute. makes it so well fitted for the web? We talk about that a lot, but what part of PHP's design makes it like, oh, it, it's just a natural web language, server-side web language? Yeah, oh, how, do we, how do we start with that? I mean, so input processing from requests is just an automatic thing. It's just right there. Obviously in any other language, you can just load up, you know, uh, CGI.pl if, if you're running Perl and that's gonna deal with your, your input parameters just as well. But, um, header outputs, um, like I can go through a laundry list of the things, of the little things that PHP does to just make dealing with all of these web things more easy. File uploads um, is trivial in PHP in a way that it isn't in a lot of languages. Um, but I mean, ultimately all I'm gonna come back to is that same statement I made earlier is that PHP, this is what PHP was built for. And it's, I don't know what more to say than it just has those tools. Um, you know, PHP's shared nothing architecture uh, is also something that a lot of languages actually try to avoid. You look at something like a Java framework for the web, it's going to have this sort of front loading uh, uh, stateful machine that exists on that server node and is able to serve up individual requests faster, 
but it adds a ton of complexity to horizontal scaling to get all of these different nodes talking to each other correctly. So PHP, because it was built from this shared nothing architecture, uh, is still going to have some synchronization issues, but it's not leading you down a path where you are assuming the single node architecture right up until the point that you can't assume it anymore. Hate to pick yeah, on Java, I, but. A lot of people have been describing it as, you know, PHP was doing serverless back before serverless was a word because every process is independent. So it doesn't matter if you spread it out across 50 different servers or one server, the code is the same. Yeah, when I looked at Lambda, they, they released this and PHP was not in the initial list of languages. And I'm like, this is literally PHP's wheelhouse. This is how PHP operates. It, ha it takes a request in, it does some work, it spits it out, and then it's done. That is PHP. So it's not surprising that Lambda eventually added PHP support. Because we're awesome. Oh, they did add PHP support eventually. I, I didn't realize I they that. did. God, I hope I'm not wrong about that. That would look very embarrassing. I, I don't know. They, if they haven't, they should. Yes, they absolutely should. <laughs> you so I've, I've been away from writing much, so much PHP for the last, uh, I don't know, a year or so. And I've been writing in, uh, in another language um, made by uh, one, of, one of the tech giants. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, so but having had some experience of, of that, uh, I think one of the advantages of PHP for the web is a bit more abstract and is that structuring a, a very large project, which a website often is, and like legitimately, you often need a kind of a, basically a monolithic, a, a large monolithic complex application. And PHP with the namespaces and, and you, they're just files and they're just included by this, magical auto loader um, the composer runs composer makes for you um, uh, and yeah it's it's very easy to structure a large project even if there are multiple different paradigms in in each part of it um, yeah um, all you need to do is somehow get it into a composer package um, you mentioned languages developed by large Silicon Valley companies. I will pick on Golang, which was surely not the language you were picking on. Um, but if you look at its dependency management, um, I, maybe it's improved in the past couple of years. But the last time I tried to deal with Golang, um, its its actual dependency management was frankly just a, a big hot mess. Um, and that's that's something you need if you're going to build something very very large. And I see people are capable of building large things with Go, and you can fight the runtime and make it do anything you want because it is Turing complete. It's a it's a full language, but um, it the language should be slowing you down. It should be speeding you up. So Peach, uh, Go's package management has improved dramatically with modules, but it is still I would argue not up to the level that PHP and Rust are, which I, I usually regard it as the uh, the top tier package management tools. Rust, I was actually really happy to see its, its dependency management system um, in comparison to Go in particular. But it's good to hear that Go has improved. So mm -hmm. we all of our languages evolved, and, and we, hope, we hope that every one of them becomes really great and really easy to use. Yeah. So we do have a comment from uh, one of our viewers. Uh, Barney Lawrence says, Lambda does not just support PHP directly, but there are ways to make it work, such as the breadth framework. So we'll add a link to that in the show notes as well. Maybe, maybe that's what I was thinking of. I feel like I read some article somewhere that's saying Lambda supported it, but that must be it. So we have a, another question uh, from uh, the audience. Uh, George Birnbaum would like to hear what's in the pipeline to update the documentation look and feel. Is this the right audience for that? I mean, I'm not aware of anything actively going on to update the documentation look and feel. I do know that this is a perennial topic. Um, people just want the latest sort of visual styling on PHP. I thought the old PHP 3 website was uh, just fine. It had all the information I wanted. So you're not going to find that I have a lot of opinions on when and how it should be updated. But hey, here's the good news. Uh, the PHP website is on GitHub github.com slash php slash web dash php. If you have opinions on ways to improve 
the styling or how the documentation is actually laid out and using sections around, um, feel free to start a discussion uh, or even send pull requests. Um, that is really the motivation for getting anything happening in PHP is just somebody caring about it. And, you know, we, we all care about the documentation, but we don't necessarily have opinions on what it should look like. Uh, I know we, we updated the look and feel of the document, the website as a whole and the documentation, oh, it feels like very recently, but I'm now realizing it was probably 10 years ago. Um, wow. to, to look like the, the current theme. Um, it feels recent to me. Uh, I think it was less than 10 years ago that it got its yeah. last refresh. But it, it was, was definitely pre 7.0 though. Was it? Yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure. Yeah. So it's more than five um, years. Now. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of documentation, I have um, uh, there are two projects that I'm that I'm helping people to move forward with it. Uh, the first one uh, is to move from SVN to Git. Uh, because the documentation of PHP is still maintained on SVN. Uh, so we have a couple of POCs on GitHub uh, in the official organization of PHP, uh, which is mirroring uh, to Git, uh, so allowing people to contribute via pull requests. Um, and um, another thing that uh, uh, Paul Dergonis was talking with me a couple of weeks ago is what Sarah just talked about. Uh, we have PHP website on Git, and people are trying to improve the style or the way that they search via the documentation. Uh, so we have started to gather feedback. Actually, Paul did the whole uh, the whole thing. Um, which is we are we have a server somewhere on Reddit saying hey what what should we improve in the PHP website and then we have more than a thousand um, requests saying hey we should improve in this we should improve that uh, so definitely people are are gathering data uh, to improve the PHP website uh, because we just don't want to to just say hey PHP website is old okay that's a very nice feedback but we need more than that uh, so that's the the whole um, um, workflow that Paul is doing. Uh, so that those are the two big projects that I know involving PHP documentation right now. Yeah, that's a very right, so important here's my, point. Here's my design concept. Bubbly buttons, and when you click on the search button, it makes a big yellow pop-up that has your search window in it. Um, that, 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 that's the PHP 3 look. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, but that's it, a good it, point. It that... looked very 90s. It looked extremely 90s. When you're designing a website, you want to move towards something, not away from something. And more people should remember that when doing a redesign, whether that's for PHP or anything else. And really any it, what, kind of design at all. Yeah, the, no, no, absolutely. I, I obviously joke. I, I, yes. I, I do love the new look of the, uh, the, new look of the website. And uh, I, I welcome an even newer one, uh, mm -hmm. as long as I can still find my cheese. But um, I, I would say in addition to look and feel, there's actually some work that needs to be done of just updating the code internally to the website. Um, the original version of the website written by Jim, Win Jim Winstead, a lot of that code still exists that was written for PHP 3 or 4. And it still runs because PHP is great about backwards compatibility, yay PHP. Um, but part of the reason it sort of didn't get pulled along much through the years is because our mirroring system made it so we didn't necessarily know what version of PHP a given mirror would run on. Um, we had points where like 7.0 was the most recent and there were still nodes running on like 5.1 and 5.2, um, which felt very old at the time. And they were because they were what six years old at the time because releases were further apart. Um, since then, we have actually basically got rid of the entire mirroring program. And so now we have the primary website is a machine completely controlled by us. So it is running modern versions of PHP. And then most of the static content is then served out of CDNs and we have ways of distributing the load across uh, things that just didn't exist at the time because those services did not exist when we put together PHP the first time. Bear in mind, the PHP website is also as old as the project. Well, very nearly as old as the project. So uh, whenever I touch something on PHP web, I am always like, okay, we're gonna bring some seven features into here. We're gonna make strict types. We're gonna you know, put typing through this whole thing. We're gonna use some closers. We're gonna use some namespaces. So um, those sorts of things can also be added onto and improved within the PHP website. So this actually brings up another interesting point that we can talk on briefly. We were talking before about languages built by big Silicon Valley companies. PHP isn't. 
most languages these days have some large corporate backer. Uh, uh, TypeScript has Microsoft, Go has Google, Swift has Apple, Rust has Mozilla. PHP never has. It's one of those weird projects that is completely distributed with no main corporate backer and barely any structure to the development process itself. How does that work? Well, <laughs> no, that is a bit about the he, dev process he has itself. A <laughs> Gabriel, you can answer, PHP. but first I want to just call out Larry for not mentioning Hackling when I'm in the room, <laughs> which also has a corporate backer of Facebook. Come on, man. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> No, it's just the way that he described PHP. Uh, uh, actually, this is a this is a, a topic that a lot of people are, are bringing, uh, especially this year, uh, because last year we had the first, as far as I know, the first company that did something in the modern age of PHP to support, which was JetBrains hiring Nikita Popov to work full time for PHP source code and also in PHP projects that help the community, the PHP parser, um, the um, the the AST extension, and so on, uh, and a lot. A lot of other companies are trying to do that. Uh, a Brazilian company a couple of months ago has reached me saying, hey, we want to hire someone uh, to work in PHP towards our company's problem. But I was like, okay, this is another company trying to do the same thing that JetBrains is doing. Uh, and um, I think a couple of interviews ago that I had with Sarah for some podcasts, we also had this question. Uh, and what we always say is bringing money and bringing companies to, to, a, to a language it is not trivial. It's not easy. There's a lot of process. There's a lot of bureaucracy involved. And PHP has just has been doing just fine with being open source. Like a lot of people are... It's not evolving the same path in the same speed as other companies. But hey, it's evolving. So I don't know what Sarah thinks about it, but that's my, my take on it. I, I mean, so... You, you mentioned Jeff Brains hiring Nikita, and that has definitely you know, been a boon to the community because Nikita, once again, is an actual machine. Like, I think he's got cogs and wheels in him. Um, he produces a ton of really great code for PHP, and he's done a ton for moving the language forward in the past few years. But um, they're not the first. Um, perennially, some company will come and say, hey, we want to help put some money into PHP. We want to give back to this language that has given us so much that our entire business runs on. Um, and sometimes that comes from, you know, small, smaller companies, medium companies. Um, Facebook came to PHP while I was there and said, hey, we, 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 do you like money? We have money. We can give you some money. Um, and PHP's answer, regardless of the person offering, has always, always been, no, nah, we could. Uh, because frankly, uh, what does PHP actually need to function? Well, it needs a server to run PHP.net and probably some, you know, some CDN support and things like that. So we do take very small, very specific contributions from various places just to have the hardware physically running on some bandwidth. But beyond that, there is always a concern that we do not want to become beholden to anyone. Um, we do not want to be in a spot where somebody is going to say like, hey, we really wish you guys would go in this direction and uh, be a shame if anything disappeared. Um, we also do not want to be seen to be uh, endorsing anyone particularly hard. So if a, if a framework came to us and said like, hey, we want to you know, help out with this and maybe you could just put a little logo over there. Um, so it, it's maintaining that the absolute impartiality is very important to the project uh, because as you said, Larry, PHP is a very pure open source project. It is um, all about the people who bring their problems and their solutions to the project to make it better. And for better or worse, most projects in the open source system um, have at least some kind of top-down structure. You know, the original author of the project usually is the BDFL for life. And to a small degree, Rasmus is kind of the BDFL for life of PHP, but he is very explicitly hands-off with that. You never see Rasmus come in and say, yeah, guys, I think, uh, X is a really bad idea, and I don't care that everyone voted for it. I'm not going to see it in my language. You never see that. You also don't see that from uh, Zev and Andy, who are arguably like the next layer down from Ra from Rasmus in terms of owners of the language. Mm -hmm. What you see in PHP is the community either comes together and adds something to language, or they don't, and we don't add something to language until we decide to come together. And the RC process has really helped formalize that in the long term. 
Um, so walk us through the RFC well, process just very briefly for how PHP gets developed. I'm glad you asked that because I'd lost my train of thought. It had gone <laughs> completely off the rails. So yeah, the RFC process is basically, it's modeled on the IETF RFC process a little bit, although we're slightly less formal about that than they are. Excuse me. Um, the basic idea is somebody comes up with an idea. They want some, let's say generics, since we picked up on that earlier and it doesn't exist in language yet. Um, typically the conversation should start with just a sort of like, hey, I was thinking something along these lines feels like a good idea. Just send it to the email, uh, send an email to the list and just say, hey, how do people feel about generics? What's, what's the temperature in the pool here? And get a informal idea for where people sit on it. You know, you might find out that, no, we've had this discussion before. Here's the thread. We think it's a terrible idea and shouldn't be done, which hopefully contains reasons why it was a terrible idea. And maybe you can resurrect it addressing those things. Uh, or, hey, I think that's a great idea. Let's do something like that. That'll be really good for the language. And so the next step is to actually formalize what you mean by generics. I could say, hey, generics, 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 but nobody really knows what my, um, my view of generics actually are because they're slightly different in different languages. Java generics are not like uh, C++ generics, for example, or hackling generics. Um, so we write up the proposal that says, okay, Here's what the syntax looks like. Here's what the behavior looks like. Here's sort of the edge cases. Here's why this is good. Um, here are the potential dangers of going with this, maybe backwards incompatibility or um, you know, sitting on some bit of namespace or something like that. And then we have a longer discussion once that's been posted to wiki.php.net slash RFCs. Uh, that conversation ideally focuses on Motivations, is this something that really needs to be in the language? Technical details, is this actually going to work the way you expect or are there weird edge cases you haven't considered? Um, and to a, a much, much smaller extent, um, what should the syntax actually look like? The syntax discussion is important, but typically the syntax discussion is what dominates everything because it's the easiest thing to talk about. Ideally, the, uh, the group then gets to a point where, yeah, enough of us feel like we agree that we can actually bring this to a vote. Uh, maybe not everyone's 100% on board. You're not going to convince everybody. But we bring it to a vote. The vote has to last at least two weeks. And at least two thirds of those people voting on it have to support that feature for it to become part of the language. There was a time where we had a 50% plus one rule for things that were non syntaxy But we scrapped that because we decided we really want people to be sure they want something to come into the language if we're going to bring it in. So at this point, um, if you've got a full two thirds vote on it, great. You finish the implementation, you uh, get somebody else to look at it as a code review on GitHub. That's not a formal part of the process, but it has definitely become a standard part of the process. And then commit. Um, a lot like the process of working on a feature at a company is really, you know, you, you define what the scope of your feature is, you define the design for it, you actually implement that design, you get buy-in from everybody, and then you you push it into the code repo. So Can I it's not that weird that? of a process. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so one important thing, uh, this come up in a in a uh, in a couple of conference that I have spoke a couple of months ago. People was just assuming that Sarah, I, Rasmus, Nikita, we have more power of vote just because we are someone. That's not true. We have one vote and one vote only. If we decided to vote yes or no, that's that's count as just one. So if Nikita, Sarah, I, Rasmus has vote against, and then a uh, hundred other people has voted yes, that thing is gonna is gonna is gonna be implemented in the language. That we have no power of having more or less importance. We have we are all the same. We are all level. I, officially, although I will say. If uh, Nikita votes against something, there's going to be a lot of people following his vote. Oh yeah, yeah because true. yeah, like there's a lot of respect for Nikita within the internals group um, and Rasmus as well. Um, if Rasmus mm -hmm. votes against something, that's at least going to make people pause and think, "Huh, maybe why? I should go why? back and look at the thread and see why he's voting against that." Yeah. Um, and Zev and, and Dimitri and a few others, uh, Stas, I think, falls on that list as well. Uh, yeah. So a question is um, for those who are maybe new to BHP or those who've um, been with it for a while, suppose I was a developer starting a new project 
a greenfield app or something and i'm open-minded about what language to use when when should i use php and when shouldn't i what's what is it particularly good or bad for gabriel <laughs> uh it's a very difficult uh, well my standard answer for that is it depends on your needs so if you have a need for your business or your project that PHP is going to help you like faster than Python or Java or whatever, just use PHP. Uh, if you if you know your problem and you know how to solve your problem, a language is just a tool. If that tool is going to help you, it's going to speed you or, or it's going to slow you down, then you need to, to make the, the calls. But um, yeah, it's a very it's a very broad question for a very specific answer. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... You're not going to hurt our feelings if you don't use PHP. Um, mostly because we've all heard enough complaints about PHP. We've got some thick skin, but also, you know what? It, it, it's it's not like it's taking money out of our pockets. You know, it's we're we're just doing what we do because we love it. I I got on the airplane once, and this guy in front of me saw me wearing a PHP shirt, and he's like, "Well, you should probably choose Java." And I'm just like, "Okay." Some people. Let's we'll start right. Say if, if you had a project that you were starting and you you know PHP well, that's you know you're very comfortable in it. What kind of project would you you know look at and go? I know PHP, but I'm not going to use PHP for this. I'm going to use X. What would uh, so, that be? Yeah, I got an answer for that. So uh, most most people listening to the podcast probably don't know what's out there, but there's a website gtk.php.net. Actually, it may not be me up anymore, but it was up for the longest time. Somebody had written bindings from PHP to GTK to be able to write GUI interfaces in PHP. Don't do that. That's a terrible use for PHP. PHP is not suited to the, uh, the concurrency requirements and the life cycle of a GUI app. That's a terrible idea. Like it's great that somebody wrote the bindings. I'm sure it was a fun exercise for them. I'm sure they got something useful out of it because that's where these solutions come from, people trying to solve problems. But it's just, no, no. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> do you have an answer, Gabriel? No. I, I was just looking at the domain <laughs> that it said, like, I, I didn't know that we had that masterpiece. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Derek is reminding us that he uses PHP GTK daily. So uh, oh citation God. required, Derek. I want to see some screenshots. <laughs> is your uh, whiskey dram site uh, running on PHP GTK? So you've got a, a, a little GUI interface locally. Yeah, we, we have some people in the chat saying challenge accepted. So expect to mm. see some PHP GUI applications written in the next couple of months. You know what? It would warm my heart to see those things out there <laughs> just because it would spawn conversation about the decisions we make when we work on projects. Um, but oh, yeah, I mean, I say that having written extensions for PHP, like OpenAL, which, you know, obviously you want to do audio processing in PHP, right? Probably not. Um, yeah. And yet somebody emailed me about it like a year ago saying they needed an updated version. So <laughs> somebody somewhere is doing it. Life finds a way, developers find a way. <laughs> <laughs> Code finds a way. That's the, the curse of a Turing complete language. Eventually, you will implement everything in it, whether it was a good idea or not. You know, I see lots of posts about machine learning in PHP. And I mean, it's hard to tell what people mean when they say machine learning, but I guess somebody's doing it somewhere. And I guess the JIT's going to make it better. Yeah. I think those are the kind of cases where things like FFI and the JIT are really going to be helpful because, and for those who not, don't follow it, PHP 8 is going to have a just in time compiler which is mainly useful for CPU intensive persistent tasks, things like machine learning. And you know, the goal for both of those is make PHP better for all the non-web stuff or web adjacent stuff that's out there. In theory, it'll make it better for web stuff as well. Um, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic how much better it makes the web, but we'll see. Yeah, I, we're still waiting on good real world benchmarks on that. The preliminary benchmarks yeah. are still one, what to expect. Not just not just improving, but also open doors because there are a lot of applications that people do not even consider PHP because PHP does, is not fast or reliable enough. But now with PHP 8, let's see what new. Well, I do want to challenge the concept conception that PHP isn't fast because PHP is actually 
a pretty darn fast language at what it does. Um, I don't think people give it quite enough respect when they compare it to other languages. Yeah, because the raw PHP is fast, but like when you start to put tooling around, that's when you start to have the downgrades. Yeah, I agree. Well, also a lot of these 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 conceptions come from the PHP 5 era, and we literally doubled older. the speed in 7. So, like, true. you have to take that into account. Yeah, true. Well, I've, the benchmarks I've seen put PHP, depending on the task, slightly above or slightly below JavaScript, modern JavaScript in terms of performance. Oh, wow. And it totally okay. blows Python and Ruby out of the water, performance-wise, on just straight CPU tasks. Yeah. So, Big yeah. asterisk, it depends on the workload, obviously, is, is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and JavaScript has async and await now, which uh, is going to put it ahead on parallelizable tasks. But... Right. And we have a, a comment from Flavio Heleno, who says, I just want to thank you for all the amazing work you do for PHP. Infinite respect for you. Thank you both. Thank you. Kisses. I, I, there's a lot of people working to make PHP happen. And uh, yes. there's a lot of thanks and respects that need to go around to all the people. Yeah. Well, pass it along. Yeah, that's something that I make sure to uh, to put in my talk, but also on podcasts. Like, uh, we have the release managers, Sarah and I. Uh, we have Nikita. We have Dimitri. But we have a tons of other people. We have uh, people that maintain extensions. So, for example, Derry maintain, maintains Xdebug. Uh, Remy maintains a bunch of other extensions. Uh, he's doing a massive t force task to make sure that uh, the PECO and also other extensions are compatible with PHP 8. Uh, we have um, uh, newbies to the, to the PHP source code. So, for example, George. Uh, and Mate, they were the ones that work with Nikita to migrate all the errors, all, all the warnings that we had to type errors on PHP 8, uh, all the migrations from the um, uh, from what we have internally called arguing for two stubs. Uh, that's how the way that reflection pulls that information to to tell you, hey, this function returns a boolean, or this function takes three arguments uh, which are string and integers. Uh, so those stuff we're doing by them. Uh, we have Dimitri, we have Christopher, which works with Microsoft to make sure the PHP and Windows uh, have their connection. We have a bunch of people work on PHP terms. Of course, we want more, uh, but the team that we have nowadays is doing an amazing job. So and go I give your... Add... Sorry, I just wanted to your... add uh, Chris Huffbecker and Stefan Zarkos. Uh, if you use yeah. PHP on Windows, thank those two guys because they're the ones just making that happen, period. Mm -hmm. And a tall way be. Oh, and so, a tall, yeah. yes, sorry, sorry, I don't. No, no, yeah, it's been a while that, that he, he contributed. Uh, so yeah, go put your money on GitHub sponsors for those people because they're the ones making PHP happen. All right. I think that just about wraps it up for the day. So any closing thoughts from the panel? I have a question for Sarah. Oh. Uh-oh. If you might, <laughs> uh, how support. oh my god, how fast do you think the community is not gonna support but migrate to PHP eight? That's a great question. Um, you know, every time we see a new major version, there's always that lag before people actually get involved uh, in using it, and part of that lag is the distros. You know, most people actually just want to say apt get install or yum install or whatever to get their PHP, and that's fine. Um, but that does introduce a lag all by itself. Um, I think the delay in adopting eight is probably going to be on par with the delay on, in adopting seven. Um, seven introduced some syntax and compatibility changes with the universal variable syntax. Um, eight doesn't have those issues, but it does have a number of runtime changes, things like promotions uh, to errors and exceptions uh, that are going to slow people down just a little bit. And I also think that library and framework authors might be a little bit slow to say, yes, we support PHP just because of named parameters. They want to make sure they have all their parameter names mm -hmm. exactly how they want to be before they say, yes, this is an API. So that one feature alone, I think, might slow them down a little bit uh, from, mm -hmm. from going forward. So, so yeah. I think by the time 8. Point... Yeah, I want to say by the time 8.1 comes out, 8.0 will probably have like 10% of, of the total is going to be my prediction. We, we can see where we are a year from now. Nice. Hello. Yeah, because I see a lot of frameworks are already supporting it, which is wasn't that difficult. But migrating to PHPA, that's the thing that I want to see how long it's going to take. Cool. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Yeah, generally, what we see on the, the stats from Packagist that uh, Jordy puts out is 
compatibility with newer PHP versions is pretty fast. People actually using major versions or new versions is faster than it used to be. It's not as fast as something like Go or Rust where it's like, it just happens immediately. But uh, there hasn't been a big lag like there was with PHP 5.0 in literally 15 years. So uh, I'm already looking forward to using some of the new syntax in my own work like today. <laughs> We also need to bear in mind that there's always going to be a long tail of people on old versions. Um, WordPress in particular had said that they were going to make 7.1 their new minimum or 7.2, something like that. Uh, apparently, and, and confirm this, don't take me 100%, but apparently they've rolled that back and they're going to keep 5.6 as their minimum um, for some period of time to come, uh, which I regard as unfortunate. I think they should be you know, being a bit of more of a carrot, uh, sorry, a stick pushing their users forward onto newer versions of PHP if they insist on upgrading WordPress, but um, that is the reality of where we're at. So, um, yeah. Also right. Composers uh, support 5.3 in its latest version, which is Composer 2. So they are still supporting um, all of those people. It's an in interesting balance between to PHP strikes between pushing for new stuff and not abandoning people who don't feel like updating. And that's always a tricky balance to, to strike. Yeah. I remember we don't want to throw they... users away, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember when I asked George one time, like, oh, what about PHP 7? He was like, dude, you have no idea how much people are in PHP 5. So it's low down. It's going to take a while. <laughs> All right. a long tail. I think on that, we can call that an episode. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Patrick. For those at home, uh, do remember it is Friday, which makes it an excellent day to deploy, especially on Platform SH, where you can try out PHP 8 RC1 today. Uh, we have a blog post on that. Sarah's showing off her uh, wonderful platform shirt. And you know, we, we already are supporting PHP 8 pre-releases, so you can test out your code with PHP 8, make sure everything works. And we plan to have PHP 8.0.0 available the day of release. We've done that for the last several PHP releases, and we plan to do it for this one too. So very much looking forward to that. <clears throat> and tune in next week, where we continue our Language Spotlight series, and we'll be talking about Java. So. If there's ever a SmackDown, it was between PHP and Java, but we love them both. And we support both. You can run both PHP and Java, even in the same project, if you want to. So tune in next week, and we will dig into the Java ecosystem and Java language. Until then, uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday, and happy deploying. Take care. <laughs>